And here's the video review for Kamen Rider Kuga Decade Edition. Uh, this is from the Super Imaginative Chigokin line, or SIC, and it is the volume 56 of the series. It's also the second time they've done Kuga. The first time was in the early series, and he was a lot skinnier, lankier, sort of showed off his show appearance a little more, but it also they made him a lot more buggy and organic. This is definitely a more, uh, I don't know how to put it, less organic, but also more beefy. Kind of makes him look a little less like a bug and more like a monster bug. I don't know. But it's definitely a different interpretation. I wish I had the first one to show the two, but I do have Figuarts Arts Kuga, his normal show buddy. Well, show costume, I should say. Now, as you can see, the differences between the two is Kuga's red is or Figuarts Arts Kuga. I'm talking about two Kugas here, should specify. Figuarts Arts Kuga has a more yellow gold, and his red is a little uh, brighter, but it's also a different color on his arms. Whereas over here, on the SIC version, the gold is a little more uh, gold, and the red is more of a consistent color. But once again, the arms and the chest piece do have two different reds. I'm not sure if that's how it was in the show. I can't really recall. But it's sort of an interesting uh, thing that both Kuga figures have it. Uh, as you can see, with his vest, it has the, uh, the writing, the Grangi writing. But then over here, as you can see, his vest, it's got a lot more detail worked into it. It kind of looks more like, almost more organic. The armor has like different lines, panels, like they're, they're different groupings of panels grown and fused together like a, a bone versus just the regular armor. Uh, Kuga's accessories are sort of sparse to an extent. He has his form change, so he can go to Amazing Mighty form, which I'll show you in a bit. And he has an interesting thing, interesting accessory. Since this is the Kuga, or Decade Edition of Kuga, he comes with a Decade Belt with the Ride Booker. Now to, this is to facilitate, and I guess some of the things, it's something they're going to be doing with the, uh, all of the Decade Edition figures, which is kind of interesting, but you just pop off Kuga's belt, and then pop open this one. Decade's belt, and you gotta, there's grooves there. You gotta go in just right. Did I have it right? No? Do, do, do. Uh, it's really a tight, tight squeeze on there. I don't know if you can hear the plastic. It sounds like it's about to break. And I don't want to force it on anymore, but it's definitely a tight squeeze. So now you can have a decade edition of Kuga. Now some of the interesting things here is with the decade, with the the belt, decades belt that Kuga comes with is actually different from the SIC decade. I have the two to compare here. Uh, first off, Kuga's is smaller because it doesn't do the transformation gimmick or card gimmick that uh, Decades does. And also interesting is the Ride Bookers. His Decades opens up and has to turn into the gun and the sword. Whereas Kuga's just turns into the gun and doesn't have any opening mechanism. So there are benefits to having both. I think with uh, getting the Decade edition of Kuga, you kind of get a smaller, cooler belt, more show accurate belt. His belt's kind of huge. And you get a more show accurate ride booker because Kab the SIC Kabuto Decade Edition comes with another belt, and his comes with the uh, ride booker in sword form. So you can kind of have a. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of neat, I guess. It's sort of a weird thing to throw in there. But it also. There's another part of Kuga that is the considered part of the Decade Edition that I'll show you in a bit as I pull him off camera like an idiot. Get this belt popped back on here. And it, the belt, Kuga's belt goes on and off pretty easily. If I could get it. Uh, the Decade one is real, real tough. There we go. I was really looking forward to this figure because I missed out on a lot of the older SIC releases because I was still... Uh, getting into the Kamen Rider and everything when they first came out. 
and I didn't even know they existed for a long time, but thanks to Vangelis and his great reviews of a lot of the Rider stuff, it kind of got me interested. So thank you, Vangelis, for making me spend my money. Anyway, so Kuga comes with some interesting things. He's the uh, interesting features from past SIC releases, I should say. He's the newest release they've done, and Kamen Rider Double comes out this month, being March. And I'm curious to see if anything they did for Kuga will carry over. Now, some of the things I'm talking about is the hands, mostly. On every other SIC I own, the hands have their own peg. Each, so each hand, each set of hands would have an individual peg, but on this, it's actually in his arm. So I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, choice they did. Because, like, over here, if you look at, since I have Decade right here, See, his hands all have the different pegs. So I'm kind of curious uh, if Double will continue with that. But since we're going to do the transformation on him, I'll just leave his hands off. Now transforming him into his amazing mighty form is simple enough. But one thing they did that I'm really impressed with, that they didn't do with uh, Kabuto, and I wish they would have, SIC Kabuto, is his knee pads. SIC Kabuto has different colored knee pads when he goes into hyperform, and it's kind of a nitpick, but uh, I was sort of disappointed when the SIC Kabuto figure didn't have interchangeable knee pads. So I'm going to make strip Kuga down here. Also, the die cast content is his knee pads are die cast on both forms, and his shin guards are die cast on die cast and his uh, replacement ones are die cast. So now we have emaciated Kuga. He needs some help. So it's pretty simple. He has the same chest. Uh, the chest pieces are the same. Just one's painted black. So I, I believe that's show accurate. I don't think the Amazing Mighty chest piece really got any different. I would have almost liked to have seen Kuga come with his ultimate or rising form, but I think that would have probably been way too much of a mold issue. I don't know if they've announced that they're going to do it or not or what. But I've always been partial to his Amazing Mighty form simply because I like the all black color scheme. But it's still sort of a simplistic design. Uh, yeah, these also, I can't hear see it, but these, his new uh, shin pieces are also all die cast, which is nice. But his feet aren't unlike the figure arts. There we go. Gonna pop off his little belt piece, which I think was neat. There we go. Now one of the other things they did with him that I thought was interesting is instead of giving him a ton of different hands, they only give him one set of hands. And then the plates on the back of his hands actually pop off and you can replace them. So yeah, it's a tiny piece to lose, but I thought it was sort of an interesting way to save money. That's what it seems like they went for with him, is new ways to save money. Because, and all the other ones I have, like I said, the hand, I think the hand pegs probably are cheaper this way. And I sort of like it because it's a smaller peg. And you just get, since it's very similar setup. You get just the same amount of posability as before. Although I'm not sure. We'll see what Double does. There we go. As far as hand counts, he comes with these kind of relaxed hands, fists, his signature thumbs up hand, and part of his uh, Tension sequence hand. One of the things I do love about him, it's best to show on these uh, splayed open hands, is they're really pointy. They look almost uh, like you don't want you don't want Kuga to scratch your back because it'll hurt. But yeah, his posability is pretty good because he doesn't have a lot of uh, extra armor or anything to hinder it. So he's got the uh, you know the only thing that really hinders is his chest, but even then. Now Kuga looks like he's shocked and appalled, like, what's going on over there? But the other thing Kuga comes with that solidifies his Decade Edition is his giant beetle form. Oh, and it fell. 
One thing I don't like about it is one of the hands are always coming off. So now we have always, see what I mean? Just popped on. It does not go in there very well. This thing is definitely a, as you see, pops apart here, uh, display piece. Now, if I was going to be doing this properly, which I'm not, because I don't really like the giant final form rides. Let me just tilt this down so you can see it better. And there we go. Not really a big fan of the final form rides, personally. I think they're neat, but I would have liked to see the plastic, especially on Kabuto, used better. Because on Kabuto, it's kind of, uh, in my opinion, a gigantic waste. But that's a different story for a different day. Anyway, back to... Uh, and I cannot get my camera. I apologize for this. Can I get my camera to... There we go. Anyway, so he comes with his final form ride, which Decade in the show turns him into. I think it's really neat looking. Uh, I'm really frustrated by these little arm things. They're always falling out. They don't like to sit in there very well. They just sort of... There's no clip or bump or anything. They just friction in there. You got to wedge it in there pretty good. And even then it falls out. But uh, usually what you can do is you can actually fold Kuga up and attach these special leg pieces on Kuga and they plug into here to uh, anchor his legs in. But I think it's kind of stupid to just have Kuga hanging off the back of this stupid thing. Um, I usually just have this displayed off in the background. But yeah, Kuga's leg would just go right there and he's kind of in a weird pose hanging out in there. I think... It's, what I like about this versus Kabuto's is this can display by itself. Kabuto actually, Kabuto's final form ride in his SIC actually needs Kabuto to hang out in there, which means you can't really have both on display fully. Uh, I'll go into that in my review of Kabuto later. But with Kuga's, the one thing I like is the back wings. And see, that stupid leg fell off. The back wings open up. Now, the detailing on this is great. You got the like a see through gem, see through gem here, legs, the, the pincers open. I mean, it, it is cool and ugly. Uh, one of my buddies called it hideous. Said that thing is hideous when I had it on display. But uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's for some people, not for others. You can actually sort of get Decade to stand on it, kind of. You know what I have like he did in the show? I'll just pan out real quick. I wouldn't trust it to not fall. But anyway. It's neat, if not just a big showpiece to have next to Kuga. It's one of the things I do sort of like is you can have him stand next to it like it's his mount or something. There we go. But yeah. Definitely a great figure. I really do enjoy him. Uh, he does some neat things with the SIC line that I haven't seen done yet, uh, considering he's the newest. We'll see what happens with the carry-ons. But um, I really suggest picking him up. He's like usually 50 to $60. Uh, I picked him up on AmiAmi Ami back when he first came out. Right now, HLJ is running a rider sale. I think he's like 35 bucks. Totally a steal at 35 bucks. 35 bucks is a great price for this figure. You get uh, regular... Kuga Mighty form, and then you get Amazing Fighty, Mighty form, and the giant uh, beetle. So it's it's definitely, a, you're getting a lot for the price. Um, I just wish they would have, instead of having the giant beetle, packaged some upgrade parts for his ultimate rising form. That would have been cool. But, you know, you can't have it all. So anyway, thanks for watching.